my name is Lisa Shifley. I'm the executive director at Baltimore Underground Science Space, or as we affectionately know it, BUGS. BUGS is, first of all, it's a nonprofit. It's a community lab, and it's a space to really connect people back with science. Um, the goal is really to make science accessible to all people. And usually most people who don't do science professionally, um, once you leave high school and your mandatory science classes, you don't really have many opportunities to engage with science, to learn about what's new, to really do and participate in science. Um, and we really feel that science should be a lifelong endeavor, that there's um, lots for people to learn, that it's best done in community, with the community, in service of the community. Um, and so that's what we're all about, is making um, the tools, the knowledge of science more accessible to people. What inspired me um, really is seeing the demand from the community. Um, you know, I hadn't been involved in lots of mentoring activities with high school students and college students. Um, and just seeing people who really weren't affiliated and didn't have any way to access those things because they weren't part of a university or a, a government lab or something like that, but still had a lot of interest and lots of questions and lots of desire to participate. Um, that's really inspiring. And as a professional scientist who you know does science and does research day by day and gets really bogged down in the minutia and kind of the slow pace of, of research and you know two steps forward one step back um it's really nice to see how excited people are and how um excited the public the general public is to know what we're doing um, and, and to be in conversation with us I mean, I think in the day and age we live, people just have to be science literate to really understand their health care, how they make decisions about their families. And, and, um, and so it's more and more kind of pervading our everyday lives. I think we've all seen that in the past kind of year and a half. Um, but STEM education is always also really important in building an analytical mindset. Um, we are in many ways in the world of big data, not just in science, but out of science as well. Um, thinking about how to process all the tremendous amount of information that's there, how to analyze it, how to make sense of it. Um, those are all skills that come from science. And I think whether or not people stay in science and math, um, those are really valuable and translate quite well. Our current programming, we have for adults we have courses so it can be anything from short courses we're reintroducing our lab skill nights which are short two hour uh classes where you just come in and learn a single skill and uh in a couple hours you've picked up a new technique to add to your toolbox uh two longer kind of multi-week courses where you can really dig in to a particular topic we're going to have one on genome engineering coming up in the new year um, that'll meet several times we also have our research projects and we have one analyzing what's living in the inner harbor using a genetic approach or a metagenomic approach to that and then we have our open insulin project which is really a worldwide collaboration where we're trying to combat the very, very high price of insulin for people without insurance. That's really leading diabetics to ration their insulin. Um, and we believe there's no good reason for that, that insulin we know can be made for um, a relatively low price. And so if it can be done, we think it should be done. And so our goal is to take cells which are producing a little bit of insulin and, and ramp them up and get them to produce a lot, enough to the point where we can think about community-based co-ops that could actually produce this in a safe and effective way for their communities. So we're about the science, but we're also about, again, science in service to the community. And then we also have um, talks about every two to four weeks. You can see the full list of them on Eventbrite and um, opportunities for students, high school students as well, um, that will meet from March to October. Well, I think we're really kind of challenging that 
division between professional scientists and the community. And I think we've seen that with the COVID pandemic, how um, people see science as kind of something uh, a little distant, a little scary um, from what they're actually doing. And, and we're really asking scientists to come back into conversation with the community. And it's not saying that they don't want to, we're giving them those avenues and those opportunities so that it, it can become more of a two-way dialogue so that the community can share and express what their interests, what their priorities are, what worries and troubles them. And then the scientists can respond um, and tailor and select their projects um, in, in ways that make sense. Um, so we've been working with um, the National Aquarium and scientists from IMET, the Institute of Marine and Environmental Technology on our Inner Harbor project. And we've tried to launch several group projects before to varying levels of success. But this was one project the community members just jumped on. For some reason, it, it caught people's attention. They've jumped in. They've really made a change in, in saying how they want the research to go and understanding that. And I think it's really affirmed for the scientists that there's really a deep interest and curiosity here in our urban environment, in urban ecology, even within our cities. I think the most gratifying moments are just when we see a new member, a new person come in with a new idea. Um, sometimes we think that like, oh, this is so hard. We, we keep searching for funding sources and for members and then people show up with kind of a new idea, a new direction um, and kind of revitalize what we're doing. And we're always open to new projects. We have somebody who just um, brought in a plant biology project and we haven't had plant biology going for a while. So we kind of, you know, took a shift and, and opened that uh, up back into our lab. The open insulin was another opportunity where somebody brought it to us and brought the idea um, and we encouraged it and we moved forward with it. So I think constantly seeing that um, stream of fresh, new, exciting ideas, that's what makes it all worthwhile is um, when you're busy running the place or stuck in a project that's not moving forward and you can hear something new and it just re-energizes you about um, being nerdy about science and loving science and loving the ideas and the potential of science. Um, I think that's the most gratifying part. You know, we really see ourselves as a nexus, a connecting place. We're not just about science, we're about science and environment, science and art. We have lots of artists who use our space, science and education. Um, and so if we're able to bring together people who don't usually talk, um, if we're able to let people see that science is lifelong and everybody can be a scientist. Um, if we enable students to get excited about, you know, following their own ideas for what should be done and what good ideas and projects are, um, I think those would be a tremendous legacy. So uh, where I think we really need a boost is, you know, one of the audiences we serve um, and we haven't talked about yet is um, early stage entrepreneurs who have a new idea, maybe not a lot of capital, but just need a place to start doing their science, to start doing their work, to seeing, does their idea have legs? Is there something there? Um, and that's another way that I think bugs can help, but where I really think Baltimore could use a boost and, and, and some help is taking those ideas because there's so much creativity in Baltimore. There's so much knowledge. There is so much desire to help the community, um, but helping people to get their ideas to take shape, um, to do those early stages um, of developing, of starting to do research of um, seeing what the market is. I think the more and more we can kind of nurture those ideas to come into being, that's what's gonna benefit our city long-term.